I'm worried that when you the way you said that was like they're having some sort of illicit affair, mm. Roy Hodgson and Arsene Wenger. But we've got no evidence to suggest that, have we? No, we put it out there, don't we? Okay, um, well, let's, let's, let's see. see what no evidence is not happening. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> Before we talk about that, strange things are happening in the Midlands of of this fine country. Not long after Mark Hamill accidentally became a Wolves fan, what happened? Original Jackson Five member Tito Jackson was spotted at the Molyneux. When I say spotted, he was on the pitch, presented yeah. in front of the fans. They are absolutely killing the 1970s. <laughs> <laughs> and can, well, I, can I just say because you will get emails it's Molyneux not the Molyneux sorry yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just and saving your skin I appreciate that but it is an English stadium despite the name yeah. Tito uh, famously um, fathered sired if you will all three members of 3T yeah, Did yeah, they, yeah, is that's that true, him is it yeah. Right. Tito's okay. Todger they and were all made by that I knew they were Michael Jackson's nephews but mm. I wasn't sure which oh, Jackson Tito, brother yeah. it was he's, yeah. promo- he's promoting his uh, album Tito time I listened to a little bit and to be quite frank it was in full contravention of my civil rights it was it was disgusting. It was a terrible, terrible. The front album. cover. He's wearing one of those uh, baggy white tees that uh, younger gentlemen wear, and he is too old to wear it. <laughs> I'm fairly certain Latoya Jackson did a covers album called "He's My Brother." Oh, this year, which is a, oh, a what, wonderful cover of Michael cashing. Jackson. Yeah. No, j- just of, of like famous songs, oh, and, right, and the okay. title was was "He's My Brother." <laughs> So just, I feel like if you're going to do that, be honest about it. Yeah. She has. Uh, yeah. Jim, it's, a, it's a tribute. She's not cashing in for crying yeah. out. It's a, it's a touching tribute. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, Tito, when he was presented to the fans on the pitch, why would you present him to the fans? Yeah. That's what I don't mm. He said, this is my first soccer match. I've been told all about Wolves, so I'm so excited. Why are the Wolves so intent on introducing yeah. celebrities to football? I don't know, but I quite like this. He's been told all about Wolves. Remember Walter Zenger when he went there and yeah. said, oh, in Italy, like they're, they're one of the biggest teams. <laughs> Yeah. Well, Wolves have got a very good international PR machine <laughs> going on. But, you know, I, I think this is a really rich uh, seam to mine. I think we should encourage our <laughs> listeners to get in touch with the most incongruous presentations of, of famous people yeah. at, yes. around. Okay, because yeah. I think there's quite a lot of them. Yeah. Exactly. Like the Donald. Yeah. Very much yeah. so. Like the Donaldson. <laughs> <laughs> For one more. Lads, I'm a Dunfermline fan and we have had both the actor who played Les Battersby in Coronation Street and the Blazing Squad paraded at half time. Les had a par shirt with Battersby 1 on the back. <laughs> Tragic. Kind regards, Nicky Blair. So, that, I mean, that is, that's in response to the, the calls for celebrity unveilings. The Blazing Squad. What on earth Blazing they... Squad in Dunfermline. Yeah. That they must have been doing me. a show that night or something. We, last week, for those who didn't hear it, I, I made a call for incongruous, um, um, Parading of celebrities around mm, ground. This was after Tito Jackson at Wolves. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a few people did point out that the ultimate is Michael Jackson at Exeter City with Yuri yeah. Gaynor. I mean, that's that's the high water mark. That's right? good. I mean, there was obviously a um, a statue outside Fulham of, of Michael Jackson, as we all know. But mm. Michael Jackson and Yuri, Gaynor, I think Michael Jackson might have even addressed the crowd from a lectern at St James's <laughs> Park for Exeter play. So if you're going to get anywhere near that, then please do get in touch. Well, uh, who's the actor? Tony Curtis, I think, was paraded at Fulham once upon a time. A famous actor from Some Like It Hot. Indeed. Yeah, but I think he probably was a Fulham fan, was he not? Well, Hugh Grant is, and I don't think he's ever been paraded. Well, maybe he's not quite up to muster. Yeah. <laughs> or maybe he has, I don't know. He might say more about Hugh Grant. I've, actually, I've Fulham, definitely though. seen Hugh Grant in the crowd at Fulham, actually watching the game. Yeah, he was... Uh... Maybe he doesn't want any fuss. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> <He's not laughs> That's definitely what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Didn't Cliff Richard do a song at Wimbledon once? Yeah, he did, yeah, he did, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, he did. (laughs) Not AFC, though. Um, Look, we're we're moving on up. We are. We are indeed. (laughs) (laughs) We've got some weird celebrity spots as well, celebrity sort of, you know, wheeling wheeling out of. Unveilings. Unveilings. Wheeling out of, unveilings, you know. (laughs) know, It's a a complex language, isn't it? Hi, chaps. I'm a Coventry fan and was a season ticket holder during our days at Highfield Road. During one half-time break, we were presented with none other than Mr Motivator. Suitably like Mm. reclaimed, he encouraged the crowd to join him in a spot of aerobics. Needless to say, this was less than successful. That's from Andrew Law. If you are from outside the UK, do Google Mr Motivator. It's, it's, a, it's a bizarre sight from, uh, from our youth. I think that uh, Mr Motivator would have been a little confused because he would have looked at a lot of football fans and gone, well, they're wearing sportswear. They'll be up for this. For some reason in my mind, I thought that Mr Motivator was a Leicester fan. I don't know where I got that from. I might, I might just be barking up the wrong tree. Yeah, well, actually, funnily enough, I have another email, uh, right. which might be where the confusion has, has I've arisen. Not seen, just, I've not seen in, this email. Because there has been a, there has been a similarly bizarre unveiling at Leicester. OK. So, <laughs> hi all. I remember years ago, Mark Morrison of Return of the Mac fame being paraded on the pitch at Fulham Street. Well, he's Street. definitely from Leicester. Yeah. Yeah. Um, admittedly, Morrison had links with Leicester, so not entirely odd, but I seem to remember the unveiling coming quite a few years after his brief fame. He was handed a mic on the pitch and Bradley announced, it was Return of the Mac, now it's Return of the Leicester. 
Needless nice to say, it was a tumbleweed it. moment. I think we might have covered Latham. that before on the show. Yeah, that sounds about right. Did he get Did he get a um, lookalike to do it like he did his community <laughs> service? I probably made that I joke so. in back in 2009 as well. Who did knows? Did he do that? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. He did do that. Um, yeah. So I've got one more. I think <laughs> this is a contender for the, for the strangest one of these celebrity unveilings. Well, so far, so far. So, so yeah. far, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm laying down the gauntlet to people. Uh, Ola Ramble, as a, Nor- as a Norwich fan, I prefer not to talk about letting famous fans of, uh, on the pitch at halftime, let's be having you, but my hometown <laughs> Peterborough United once had Iron Mike Tyson after his week-long holiday to Peterborough in 2010. He had yeah. a lovely old time having a Marks and Spencer's meal deal for lunch every day, but his highlight was parading around London Road in his posture at halftime. That's from, from Luke Manning. Apparently Tyson was there to do a sort of like evening weird yeah, he style. Yeah, like, he did like a book tour, tour. type thing. Yeah. I, think he was on, I think he was unveiled at a number of different grounds. But, you know, Luke's the first guy to get in touch, so Peter Brook can claim him. Yeah, Peter, Peter Brook claimed Works for me. Mike. That is extraordinary. We've got to move on from this, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're undermining ourselves, Mike. Right, yeah, <laughs> allow me to segue. So, um, <laughs> Dominic Foote's been in touch. Um, oh, Footy. Ramblers, about 15 years ago, me and my mate Andy visited the brilliant and beautiful city of Krakow and had an absolute mm. ball. One evening, we decided to take in a game at the local club KS Krakowia. Uh, in a move that took us completely by surprise, during the halftime break, Aston Villa supporting violinist Nigel Kennedy oh. was unveiled to a quite frankly un- Interested crowd. Right. The crowd, and us to be fair, didn't know what to make of it as he stood in the centre centre circle with an Aston Villa scarf tied around his arm, shouted, Go Krakovia! Then pre- proceeded to play 10 minutes of music from his new album <laughs> over an absolutely dreadful tannoy system, public address system. Yeah. It was truly bizarre. I guess we will never know how many albums the famous fiddler sold as a result, but I, can, I can't help but think it was probably zero. I'd love yeah. to think that the, the Polish people in the crowd, when he was doing his new album, they're going, Old stuff! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> play the hits! <laughs> We've got more incongruous uh, celebrities being unveiled at football teams in uh, in the hearts of the week later. So yeah, that's that. right. I've been to that stadium, but, but Nigel, Nigel Kennedy, Kennedy wasn't there. He is. He is. A, he is a. Pre- I'm pretty sure he's a bona fide Aston Villa fan. Yeah, oh, he's a, he's I think that's fan, what's yeah. in question. No, he's, probably, he's probably doing so, uh, a concert there or something. Wasn't he? Yeah, it must have been something like that. But it's, it's still a bizarre way to try and drum up a few extra ticket yeah. sales, isn't it? Yeah, I, I suppose like so. It. I, li- I like it as well. Uh-huh. I, I endorse it. Yeah. So, uh, got yet another one about um, you got to keep your eye on Nigel Kennedy because he's always on the fiddle, Jim. He's got a lot of strings to his bow. <laughs> yeah, very much so. So got some more, got some more of these bizarre um, unveilings. Oh, this is from Rick Fry. Um, he says, on the recent talk of bizarre slash tenuously linked football ground unveilings, I thought I'd reel off some of my favourites from being a West Ham season to get hold of for twenty years. Oh God, <laughs> strap yourself in, right? Yeah. Is one of them Slavin Bilic? No, I mean th- 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 there are some surprising ones in here, right? Elijah Wood, both during and post Green Street filming. That's that makes good. sense. That makes yeah, sense. That though. makes sense. But it's yeah. good, isn't that? That's, that's a big yeah. one. Pixie Lot, last season performing a new single. Louisa Johnson, don't know who that is, sang at Mark Noble's testimonial, and this is a dig, not sure which bit is more laughable here, right? Yeah. One Pound Fish Man, remember the One Pound Fish Man no. who sort of went viral? Oh, the YouTube guy. Yeah. yeah. So he appeared at halftime not only to be introduced, but also to perform his viral hit One Pound Fish, <laughs> uh, and Stone Cold Steve Austin, oh, uh, home to Fulham talking. in the late noughties after being invited as a guest of Kieran Dyers. He was unveiled at halftime, <laughs> the reaction amazing. being mixed with apathy and humour. That's from Rick Fry. That's magnificent, isn't it? Absolutely magnificent. What a mixed bag. That's Fantastic! You keep those coming in. Yeah, I, I think show at the football dot com. That's great. We've got some more coming up in the highlights of the week, but I'll leave them in there for now. Absolutely um, superb. It's, it's a real, it's a rich, it's a rich uh, seam to mine. That mm. is, I think. We sort of. I, don't, I don't know who Louisa Johnson is. I'm not sure, but I just like the Mark Noble dig, so yeah. I, wanted, I wanted to read it. Yeah. You think <laughs> it, you'd think something like Stone Cold, Cold Steve Austin being unveiled at West Ham would be something just everyone remembers? There's yeah. so many of these that are so strange. Um, it's quite West Ham for a 20 year long season ticket holder to be having a pop at the captain and for having a testimony. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand what the, what the motivation for that is. <laughs> My goodness. Go. I don't know, to be okay, honest. Let's, let's, find let's, out. let's find out, shall we? Uh, this is from Embarrassed Geordie Ewan. You guys have been talking uh, about um, embarrassing halftime presentations. I think I was there for that particular ramble. Um, I thank myself that my beloved Newcastle United never had one. I mean, what I would say is we did have that plane. Uh, Newcastle United did yeah. have that plane. I'm, no, I, but it wasn't on the pitch. We were no, doing it. It's I'm, the pitch, I'm not, it? Listen, I am not having this. I'm not an expert <laughs> yeah. on this situation, on this subject, but let me tell you now. I would be very, very surprised, to say the least, mm. if Newcastle United and all their Premier League history mm. haven't unveiled someone ridiculous at halftime. Oh, of course yeah. it would, of course, of course. But anyway, um, uh, of course, after uh, be, you know, uh, thanking himself that his beloved Newcastle United had never had one, or, or, or at least since he's knows, been attending. Yeah. Um, of course, at the very next home game this weekend's match against Liverpool, there was an embarrassing halftime presentation, with it being fresh as week, and this uh, Newcastle being a two-university city, there are rather a large amount of uh, students in the city. Mike Ashley decided 
it was a good idea to have students from around the world who were attending the city's higher education establishments to partake in a penalty shootout. I don't think Mike Ashley was involved in the genesis no. of this idea, surely. He probably doesn't know what a university is. Oh, there were representatives hmm. from countries such as Vietnam, Nigeria, Ghana and Senegal. I couldn't quite make out what flag at which was. Um, this being Newcastle, things went quickly wrong. An Indian chap decided to take shots from the behind the main group. <laughs> we, we booed a German competitor. Classy. Oh my goodness. And then uh, the man who presents the half-time entertainment began encouraging the fans to chant, get them off at the students. Oh, Jesus. It was a truly shambolic <laughs> display. You should be so, embarrassed, Ewan, and I'm pleased you are. So thank you, embarrassed Geordie Ewan. We won't shoot the messenger on this occasion. Though. Yeah, was, uh, it, was the dizzy stick involved? <laughs> I don't know. That but, is a but, that is maybe a Fratton that, Park special. Yeah, maybe the Indian guy had just hit fresh as wheat massively, like had just been <laughs> drunk out of his mind. The, Where's the goal? I'm having a crack. The, you'd imagine, <laughs> I'll tell you what. Going on the piss with Mike Ashley, you'd imagine you'd have to do the dizzy stick before going to the bar. Yeah, <laughs> and obviously right by the fireplace. Exactly. If you yeah. feel sick, into the fireplace. Uh, the Perilous. way the way Ports were played at the weekend, they don't deserve anything after that. <laughs> uh, uh, Gareth Stobart says uh, celebrity unveilings at half time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at Lewis FC, we had uh, Arthur Brown, the old fire-loving musician. That's Lewis, I think. Yeah. L- Lewis, sorry. L-E-W-E-S, Lewis, right. Lewis yeah. It's, it's around London somewhere, is that? No, no it's, it's near Brighton. Near Brighton. Yeah. It has yeah. the highest concentration of pagans in the UK. There you go. Didn't That's why Arthur Brown was there, then. The yeah, crazy world of Arthur yeah. Brown. Ah. Was he a pagan? Oh, he looked like one. He had a lot of had yeah, fire, fire on his head. head. He'd, <laughs> he'd be welcome there. <laughs> yeah, he had a fire on his head. But he said he came on the pitch in his old outfit and duly set fire to himself. This must This must this must have been, this must have been something for the many kids that get in for free to basically see to basically see a pensioner setting himself on fire. When there is nothing left to burn, you must set yourself on fire. <laughs> as a man once said. What they must have thought was you know going who, on. You know Self-immolation. You know who Arthur Brown is, Marcus, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah right. Fire. Yeah. Yeah. I'll yeah. teach you to burn. It's a banging track, though, isn't it? I mean, it's, 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 it's funny that he's had a career as long as he has, yeah. given that his unique selling point is literally setting himself on fire. Yeah. Uh, I, hope he never does, I hope he never tries to set himself on fire when he's around Kevin Keegan. Well, no, well. We all know what would happen what, what then. Do you think about the fire would just suck off of him. <laughs> Oh, Terry McDermott, a lot of hairspray. So uh, uh, hello yeah. to uh, Michael as well. He says Sugar Ray Leonard uh, at Ooh, a uh, Southern a match. That's, that's, a, that's, a, a, that's a big celebrity at a, Bo- a, at a big club. Uh, yeah, that's, it, that's very good. Uh, American boxers particularly have got a great, they do a great line in being unveiled in whatever football team of the town they're, they're fighting in. Yeah. And they always wear the shirt. So th- <laughs> you, you'll see, if you're not careful, you'll probably see American boxers who support about eight different clubs. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> a lot of shouts. I mean, our inbox was full of uh, the weekends going on with, uh, with Odin, Callum, Sean and Aberdeen and about a million other people. Uh, Coolio at Selic Park. I think we yeah. all saw that. Well, I was about to say, I saw once when I was in uh, the Netherlands, I happened to be there when the... He's kind of like what would it be called? Like the European. Uh, well, when American Aguero broke football. his arm, you were there. I was there. <laughs> <laughs> I was driving. Oh, you mean the European Football League of, of, of NFL like an, top team? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and right. uh, my mates and I, we thought, oh, why not? Hey, we're, we're here. We might as well go along. And at halftime, Coolio did the uh, did the performance. Did he? What was the story behind Coolio at Celtic Park? I then? think he's friends with whoever he was in. Brendan Rodgers. Yeah, yeah, definitely. He, whoever he was with, celebrity. He was Brent, celebrity Brendan Rodgers. He, <laughs> he was in Celebrity Big Brother with a footballer who I think played for Celtic. So I think right. he became friends. I never saw and for for some reason, he uh, well appeared at um, at halftime at Celtic Park uh, to to Gangsters Paradise. Obviously, bettered out on the on the old, uh, on the old pier. It could well be that he's just involved in a local boxing match. <laughs> well, he, well, he was wearing yeah. he was wearing a cap. Uh, Coolio's gone full. Um, bald eagle, Jim Smith. Right, okay. But he, he he refuses to let go of those tight little dreads. He's yeah. refusing to let go. There's sort of these weird kind of trees coming. A bit out like Terebo West. Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. Okay, yeah. right. Give All right, well, up, well, more power to his elbow. Listen, yeah. when it comes to Coolio, it's better to be a one-hit wonder than a no-hit wonder. Mm-hmm. Quite. Uh,